Hi, I'm going to talk about functions of machine learning that are either new or improved in version 11. I will talk about image identify, classify and predict that have been improved, a new function to do feature extraction, some improvement in the domain of clustering, a new function to do interpretable modeling, and a function to do Bayesian optimization. So, image notify is doing object classification on uh, images. So the idea is to try to figure out what is the main object in an image. Uh, there's 10,000 possible objects that it can recognize, and uh, it has been trained on uh, 10 million images uh, using a deep neural network. And you can see that on this image it recognized it was a gray wolf, and you can also do things such as specifying um, if you want the answer to be specific or not. So less specific, it will say it's a canine, and uh, do other things like this. So classify and predict have been improved in various ways, and uh, I will show a few examples of this. The first one is a direct consequence of image identify. Uh, we have been able to use uh, the, the technology of image identify and put it into classify. And uh, this allows us to train a classifier on images, so to recognize what is the main object in uh, images, uh, with a very small amount of images, yet with a very good accuracy. Uh, for example, here there's four classes that we might want to recognize, uh, and only eight images in each of these classes. And uh, let's run classify on this dataset and uh, it will create a classifier function soon, here we are. And uh, now we can use this classifier function on images that were not in the dataset. And you see that you recognize that this was a griffin, this is a centaur, this is a dragon, and this is a unicorn. And um, this is a big improvement compared to the previous um, version of classify, uh, where you needed a very large number of images to obtain a similar performance. I uh, can tell you that this classifier has an accuracy of about 90% for this uh, task. Another improvement of classify and predict is the ability to handle new data type and also mixed data type. Uh, for example, here I'm going to try to train a classifier with four examples, and each of these examples has three features. The first feature is an image, the second one is a sequence of tokens, and the last one is a date. And you can see that it returns a classifier function and we can check with classifier information that the features have been interpreted correctly. And the classifier can uh, take a new example to figure out what the class is. Finally, new methods have been added and I will show you the example of the Gaussian process method, which is a method for predict that is very good for small data set. So here is a very small data set, and uh, I'm going to predict uh, this data with a method Gaussian process. This outputs a predictor function, and uh, just for you to visualize um, what is this method Gaussian process, I will show on the plot the data in red along with the prediction line in blue, and in gray you can see the confidence interval. I will now talk about feature extraction, which is a function to learn feature extractors from data. And uh, feature extractors are functions that can transform data, various types of data, into numerical vectors, essentially. Under the hood, what happens is that we have built-in feature extractor for various types of data, and we also use dimensionality reduction. So, as you can imagine, this function is useful for most machine learning applications, classification, prediction, clustering. But I will just present one example about using feature extraction to define a distance um, in some space where distances are not usually defined, and uh, doing a search system thanks to, thanks to this. So, for example, here I have a list of uh, images that are dogs, and I will use feature extraction on the dataset. It uh, will output a feature extractor function, and then I can use this feature extraction function on new data. For example, this is a one dog of dataset, and you can see that it transformed this image into um, vector of numerical values. 
And uh, this vector uh, captured a lot about the semantic of this image. So what we can do is compute distances in this uh, feature vector space uh, in order to have a distance that is, that is uh, good to capture semantic features. And to show that, I will create a nearest function in the feature space. And here is a function, nearest dog, that will basically take an image, compute the features, find which are the nearest um, element in the original dataset, and grab the picture. So in that case, there is a dog that is not in the dataset, and we'll see which dog in this dataset is the closest to this dog according to our created distance. And here is the closest one, and we can try for a new dog, and another one. I will now talk about new function in the domain of clustering. Uh, one of them is uh, cluster classify. So the goal of cluster classify is to output a classifier from unlabeled data. For example, here we use a data set of uh, the old faithful data set. And um, what we want to do is to try to find the clusters in the data set and output a classifier that is able to uh, classify new example in one of each of these clusters. So for that, we just use cluster classify on the data set. And uh, here is a classifier function that cluster classify found. And we can visualize what clustering classify found uh, by gathering the, uh, the classified data by their labels. And here are the two clusters. The other function is clustering tree, which is very different from cluster classify uh, in the sense that it's doing hierarchical clustering. So in order to demonstrate that, I will grab some uh, molecules from chemical data and I will get some of their properties as well as their formulas. And uh, what I will do is that I will use clustering tree to find a hierarchical clustering of the, the formulas based on the properties. The formulas here are just uh, the labels. And here it was clustering tree found, and uh, actually you can see that molecules that have uh, similar formulas uh, happen to be uh, nearby, you know, under the, the, the hierarchical clustering based on their on the properties. Okay, I will now talk about interpretable modeling, uh, which means that um, what, what we saw before with uh, classify, predict, and, and other functions um, is mainly about solving tasks uh, but without understanding what the model is doing underneath. So I will show two functions, find formula and find distribution, where the goal is, is not necessarily to solve the task as uh, good as we can, uh, but to, to have a model that we can understand and uh, interpret. So the first one is uh, find formula, which is simply automatic curve fitting. So to show how it works, I will uh, grab temperature of rooms in the last uh, 10 years. And uh, actually, you can, you can see them. And uh, you can see that it has this sort of periodic behavior. So, so we will see if uh, find formula can figure that out. So to use it, you just do find formula, put the data in first argument, and this will be the variable of the, of the formula and uh, find formula, try various, various things, and end up with this quite simple uh, formula. And uh, here is the fit of the formula and the original data. So this function will not necessarily uh, find something, because if there's something that is too complicated, it just won't manage to find a simple formula. So, so again, the goal is not to use it as predict, uh, but the goal is really, if there is a simple formula, uh, please uh, find it and tell me uh, which one it is. Okay, and on a similar uh, idea, there is a function called find distributions, where in that case, um, the goal is to find a distribution, a simple a symbolic distribution. So here I extracted the word counts 
uh, in the constitution. So there's one word that has been seen 142 times, another one 186 times, but actually most of them have been seen just once. And uh, in order to know the distribution of uh, this data set, you could just plot a histogram. But you can also use find distribution and uh, to see if there exists a simple distribution uh, that can account for, um, for the data set. And you see that apparently there is a deep distribution with a parameter of 1.03. And here you can see the, the histogram and the fitted distribution side by side. I will now talk about Bayesian optimization, uh, which is an experimental function um, that is not really a machine learning function, it's actually an optimization function, um, but it uses machine learning to do optimization. Um, in more detail, it uses predict to model the objecting function and do educated guess about where the function should be queried next. And uh, so this function must, sh should be used on a particular type of objective function, uh, mostly when the function is slow to evaluate and when the function has a small number of variables. Uh, so typically, it's each time you do an optimization by hand, uh, if you have ever been um, trying various parameters and looking at a number and trying to optimize this number by hand, uh, then this means that Bayesian optimization is probably is a good tool uh, to do that instead of uh, yourself. So I will show a classic example of Bayesian optimization, which is about finding the hyperparameters of a machine learning model. Um, so we'll try to find the hyperparameters of uh, a classifier with a method super vector machine. So the parameters are here. Okay, and here is our objective function. So you can see that inside this objective function, so there's four variables, uh, we will train a classifier, and then we'll measure how good is this classifier on a test set. And the training set and the test set are taken from the Titanic dataset. Okay, so let's load dataset, let's evaluate the loss function, and here I define the region that this parameter can take. And now I can run the function Bayesian minimization to minimize this loss function um, in this region. And as you see, it takes a bit of time because each training might take up to one second. And, uh, and that's why uh, we use Bayesian optimization be because Otherwise, you would do that by hand. So, okay, it's over. And here is the optimal configuration that Bayesian minimization found. Finally, I will mention a very important addition to the machine learning domain in Mathematica, which is a neural network framework. It is a very powerful uh, framework in order to train deep neural network on CPUs, on GPUs. And uh, I won't talk about it further because it is a topic of the next presentation. Thank you.